Why don't you take a seat? Thank you. Please think about your questions, and if you have one, raise your hand. We will find you with the microphone. Um, okay, so that means instead of only maker and engineering, we need marketing people or have a new way. Kickstarter doesn't, what does it mean? Kickstarter is not enough. It's only for 10 and where's the other 100,000? Well, I think actually I presented you my own tool and I see in my own tool really limitations. The tool when we started it, built too much on prior knowledge. It's still very complicated from the PCB to really make a mass product or even a small series, let's say 10,000 pieces of something. It is very complicated and I have the feeling that we don't put enough effort to make it easier. And, and I, I mean, elaborating on why this is like that uh, is maybe too complicated in, in this round, but I have the feeling that the tools need to be better. I think the legislation, le, uh, the legislation, uh, legislation? The legislation sorry, uh, has to change. I mean, you have for hardware, it's so complicated to put a hardware product out just by all these rules which are regionally different, which are really uh, take a lot of responsibility in, in the US, right. for example. So I think this uh, has to also change, and maybe also the openness of people, but I, I mean, this is happening. I mean, we are using products from brands which are not so well known yet, etc. So I think this is happening. It's basically the tools and the politics. Right. So what's your take on that? Do you think <laughs> it's a... Uh... Um, well, I think that I think that the whole maker movement isn't actually about creating a final product, much as much as focusing on the process C's. Yeah. So, if you, I, in a certain degree, I kind of ag agreed in the sense that if you look at a lot of the, the products per se that has been produced by makers, they, they seem unfinished. They seemed, you know, not sellable, not for the wider public. Uh, but we focus. The other day, someone asked me, "What's the difference between an artisan and a maker?" Right? And my answer was that the artisans is almost always focused on, on the final product. They're trying to make it perfect. You know, if a shoemaker is trying to you know, have all the edges done well and perfection. Whereas a maker, you just want to make the shoe. And you want to see how you can probably incorporate a chip in the shoe. And afterwards, use smart materials. And afterwards, how to, you keep prototyping again and again and again. The process almost never, ever ends, ever. So that's the difference between a maker and an and artisan. So, my question is, there is, well, not so much a question. My comment is that there's also value in processes. So, you know, we, it's an accumulative learning, and I don't think that just because the product, and maybe that it's, you know, it's not so far from our imagination that, you know, one day that we can achieve that, you know, yeah. that, that missing piece of the puzzle that you mentioned earlier. Thomas, you have a view? Yeah, well, uh, hola. Well, I think that um, I, I think if we plan to build all this new ecosystem of, of I, I, don't, I don't like to tag people into the makers. I think that it's like, a, you know, if I don't use a 3D printer, or I never program an Arduino, or I don't have, you know, I don't, I'm not a hipster, I'm not a maker. So that's the thing. It should be out of uh, creating these kind of labels. That's one thing. And then if we plan all this thing that is happening, that includes makers, includes all this kind of willing of getting back into making things or producing their own things. If we point into how we made them mass produced, it's like we are planning for the past, I think, you know? But, uh, you know, the future, the, what, what is coming is basically being able to decentralize production again. Uh, it's not planning to repeat the same mold uh, different times because the technology led us to build that, those systems. And then you have to repeat them all X amount of times. And then you have to sell X amount of units. And then for that, the advertising companies existed. They make you think that you need some stuff, right? And then the whole loop is closed. So that's the past. And, and, and I like how Victor Papanek is a, a ex-MIT professor. When he already passed away, he says that industrial designers are the most dangerous uh, um, and it's a career in the world, a species in the world, no? because they design things that we don't need with very unsustainable materials to be mass produced, and they work with advertising companies. Mm -hmm. So that was in the 70s. And then the new thing is that the designer itself is becoming the producer, is becoming the consumer at the same time. So our role is because all the three things are becoming together. So we need to design platforms instead of products. And for me, the design of platforms is a key of the future, and that platform should be hackable, customizable, 
accessible and you know, fun. I like that. <laughs> Who has a question? Can we have maybe the house lights a little bit? There's a question here, and the microphone is running towards you. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Very interesting. Uh, I have a question around uh, accessibility and dissemination. Uh, basically, uh, if you have any plan or actions around uh, how to attract a public that probably is not aware about the maker movement, so not that much about that ones that already know about this technology and wants to, to use these tools, but for instance, uh, children's schools or a new public that probably could do amazing things, but they are not aware of this. Um, I can go first because it's, it's <laughs> touched really near to heart. So for us, there are three strategies that we wanted to kind of include the public. Uh, one is as basic as trying to pair two programs that are f very far away. So our idea is that Fab Cafe, which is digital fabrication and coffee, simple as that. And the second one is um, trying to have prices that are accessible to all. So we can, you can laser cut $8 you know, to $24 in an hour, which is nothing. Uh, before, you actually have to go to a specialized shop, you have to have very, you know, finalized product, and they will charge you probably hundreds of dollars to laser cut something. Uh, and the third thing is we run a lot of events. So every week there's a meetup. Every, we try to include as many different type of disciplines to, to, um, to provide the content as, what, as well as welcoming the public. So these are the three strategies that we have both at Mob and at uh, Fab Cafe. And I think it's very successful. I mean, uh, p schools are picking up on this. Uh, their, their little uh, afternoon classes on, on 3D printing, on robotics. I mean, I think there's a lot of things already going on. I think there are three, three key things that should be part of this is, as you say, the society creating awareness in other, let's say, public that we don't touch, but then including public policy into the process as well, the, the policy makers, and also industry into it. So I think if we, if we manage to get into these things, I think it can become massive. Okay. Last. Um, I couldn't agree more with your statement on we really need to help people to launch products out there. Um, I, I just want to open that question to, to the whole group and also to Reto. What ideas do you have? What, what do you think needs to happen? And also what, what ideas do you already have? Um, what are the next steps that you've already seen that gets us closer to everyone launching products? Um. Yeah, well, we are, we are currently discussing a lot. So our, our Fritzing project is about seven years old, and I think that's an age where you have to rethink anyway. And uh, one of the things we see is really the, uh, the creative technologies of our times are, are a lot of these app developers. And I think uh, it would be maybe interesting to shift a little bit the focus to more how can we enable app developers to create the Internet of Things, new hardware, uh, new, uh, new, new solutions which are currently being tackled by, by, by makers. And so I think if you, if you put yourself into that perspective and say, okay, what tools are they used to? What processes are they used to? Uh, how, can we, uh, how can we change the Internet of Things into something which can be d directly manipulated by these people? I think there's a lot of opportunity. That's what I see. The last question over there. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, you want yeah, to also <laughs> answer? Just, okay. just um, very quickly, I'm I'm a community advocate. I mean, I, we built communities, and in, in, and it's almost always about grassroots, you know, uh, involving the public. So, my answer is that what you lack, someone else can help pick up off from. So you might be a designer and you might be able to do wonderful logos, but you not, might not be able to market it so that you can sell your product or services. So in community like co-working, like fab cafes, like not, not that I'm selling myself, but in communities like this, infrastructures like this will help promote um, or help you build whatever deficit that you have personally to, to, to make your project successful. And that's, that would be my, my objective, I guess. Yeah, we're, I would say that in, you know, in coherence to what I said before, I, I, I wouldn't think about creating products. I think that products, the, 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 what we think about, about products should be redefined. No? What is a product today? Is something that needs to go into mainstream and mass produce? I don't, I don't agree, but I would say that places like uh, 
Fab Labs maker spaces and these kind of communities are encouraging people to create, in, to create new things or new solutions to needs. So I don't think that we should go to the, towards the direction of getting the next big thing and being promoted and advertised that he, uh, has been done until now, when the power of making those things locally can create a more meaning, meaning sense for them. So what I really would like to see happening is creating things that have meaning and not just products to be sold by thanks to advertising companies. Unfortunately, I think we have, unless we have a 30 second question, uh, and we can answer with yes or no. It's not that short, so maybe not. I okay. think our time is unfortunately up, so grab maybe the speakers uh, at the side. Thanks. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed really much the panel. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the hour, uh, the, well, maybe the two hour ride of uh, going from big players, global players, to the maker movement. And uh, if you want to join the discussion and keep on going, we have a booth over there, a little plug for MLOVE. And um, so I hope you have a great time at four years from now. Enjoy. Bye. Thanks.